But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels, and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early, and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them. But they will not hearken unto thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Elevating from glory to glory means increasing your knowledge and understanding. If you're not growing spiritually, then you're stagnant. If you're still on, we are the Israelites and trying to prove to the world that we are the true descendants of the biblical Israelites, you're stagnant. The other nations know who we are. It's the Israelites that are waking up to who they are. The word of the Most High said they conspired together to keep us from being a nation. There's no need to continue to convince the world of who we are. They already know. The time has come for you to elevate in your spiritual journey to properly deal with the spiritual wickedness in high places. As the scriptures are being fulfilled, make sure you're allowing the Most High to renew your mind. The spirit of wisdom is here and ready to attach itself to all who wants true wisdom. Israelites, the deception is deeper than you know. Do not let the spirit of wisdom return to the heavens because it couldn't find a place to dwell among us in the physical realm. Wisdom found no place where she might dwell. Then a dwelling place was assigned her in the heavens. Wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men and found no dwelling place. Wisdom returned to her place and took her seat among the angels. The time has come for the people of the Most High to stop rejecting knowledge. When you reject true wisdom, you perish. How long will you allow yourself to be tossed around with the fairy tales of the heathens? Israelites, the time has come for your knowledge to increase. The time has come for us to transfer generational blessings to our children. We must humble ourselves to follow the Most High as he saved the remnant in this generation. Israelites, maintain a teachable spirit the spirit realm series continue with witchcraft and idolatry part two last week you saw how the spirit of witchcraft and idolatry operates in religion when you stood before the altars the heathens built to their idols you unknowingly establish a covenant with the gods of the heathens when you establish a covenant with the idols of the heathens you gave the heathens and their idols access to you so many Israelites believe they were worshiping and serving the God of Israel in religion. However, you were serving the gods of the heathens, disguising themselves as the Most High. All Israelites who practice any form of religion is guilty of the sin of idolatry. The scriptures warn us throughout the Bible about the heathens and their ways. The scriptures said, learn not the ways of the heathens. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that, they be destroyed from before thee. And that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, 
nor diminish from it. Israelites, we must tear down the strongholds before engaging in spiritual warfare. If you don't break the covenants that give the heathens and their gods access to you, you're going in circles. You will remain a bondman and bond women in the beast system. This is why you must increase your knowledge to be delivered from the strongholds the heathens and their gods place on you. The scripture said, the truth shall make you free. So many Israelites have no knowledge about the spirit realm. As the truth of the Most High's words are being revealed about the spirit realm, a lot of Israelites are breaking the evil covenants that bound them for multiple years. Israelites, that is why it's important to increase your knowledge. The truth of the Most High's words will certainly set you free from spiritual bondage. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Don't let the heathens stealing our identity become a distraction. When you focus on convincing the world of who you are, you're not tearing down the strongholds. If you don't break those covenants, you will remain a slave. Now that we know who we are, let us elevate to tearing down the heathens' strongholds over us. We must search the deep things of the Most High to elevate and to triumphant over our enemies. Israelites, allow the truth of the Most High's words to sanctify you. The Holy Spirit will reveal truth to you as well as tell you the things to come. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Israelites, I will show you how witchcraft and idolatry operates throughout the beast system. The only way the Satans and the workers of iniquity gain access to you is when you give them access or the Most High give them access. Yes, the Most High will let your enemies have access to you when sin is found in you. The Most High allowed the enemies of his people to remove them from his presence when our ancestors continue to engage in the sins of idolatry. The Most High used the king of Assyria and the king of Babylon to remove his people from his presence. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he did. They departed not from them. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. Israelites, when the Most High remove you from his presence, that is a fatal judgment. Your enemies now have access to do whatever they want with you. The Most High will give your enemies access to you when you rebel and when he wants to do something new in your life. When the Most High wants to elevate and bring change into your life, you will see an increase of trials and tribulations. Some trials and tribulations are meant to get you to repent and some trials are meant to elevate you. Job is a prime example. The Most High gave Satan access to Job to show Satan that Job was a righteous man that loved the Most High. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Israelites, don't be surprised if the Most High give you into the hands of your enemies. We are in the land of our captivity because the Most High gave us into the hands of our enemies. The reason he gave us into our enemies' hands, the Israelites continue to sin against the Most High. Israelites, beware of giving your enemies access to you. When you give your enemies access, it gives them the opportunity to tempt you. The enemy bring all kinds of temptations into your life to get you to sin against the Most High. When you sin and don't repent, it causes a separation between you and the Most High, as well as giving your enemies access to your life. The scripture said the Most High don't tempt anyone. Anyone who is tempted are tempted by their own lusts. 
The Satans know the less of the flesh is the downfall to many. Therefore, the Satans will tempt you with the less of the flesh to establish the covenants needed to enslave you spiritually. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. But God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. The Satans, unclean spirits, and the workers of iniquity know you're not going to give them access to your life willingly. No one in their right mind would give the Satans, the workers of iniquity, and unclean spirits access to torment them. None of us would be guilty of the sin of idolatry if we knew the idols of the heathens were hiding behind the altars in religion. The Satans and the workers of iniquity in high places are aware of this. Therefore, the Satans use deception to gain access to you. The most effective form of deception the Satans use to deceive many in the beast system is duality. Through duality, the Satans are able to deceive the whole world, just as it was written that Satan would deceive the world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The Satans used the sealed scriptures written by our ancestors to deceive us into practicing religion. Once they manipulate our scrolls to their liking, they made the altered scriptures available through the authorized Bible. The workers of iniquity then used the likeness of our God to deceive us into accepting their idols as our Lord and Savior. When we accepted their gods, we committed a great sin, the sin of idolatry, breaking the first commandment. When sin is found, it brings a separation between the Most High and His people. The idols of the heathens now have access to the people who accepted the gods of the heathens as their Lord and Savior. With the gods of the heathens having access to you, it gives the workers of iniquity and unclean spirits the ability to tempt you however way they please. Israelites, it's important for the Satans to have access to you when dealing with witchcraft. When they have access, that is how they can present to you their abominations. Without access, they can't tempt you with the lust of the flesh. That is why the workers of iniquity influence you to sin to get access. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Have you noticed in the beast culture how the workers of iniquity try to make it seem as if the alphabet community's lifestyle is accepted by the Most High to get the people to accept the abomination? When dealing with sorcery and witchcraft, the workers of iniquity need you to interact with their cursed items or get you to agree or accept their abominations to proceed. If you've been paying attention, the workers of iniquity know how to get the people to accept wickedness that completely go against the laws of the Most High. For example, there are people who say they don't agree with the alphabet community's lifestyle, then turn around and say, love is love. If you disagree with the alphabet community's lifestyle, stand on it. When you turn around and say, love is love, you just accepted the alphabet community's lifestyle unawares. Be careful with the words you speak. The word of the Most High said, Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You have to be careful with what you say. Do you see how crafty the enemy is? To the Israelites and indigenous black people who didn't give the workers of iniquity access to their life through religion, the altars built to idols that are all over the beast system gave them access to you. Most of us have no knowledge of what the worker of iniquity petitioned his or her God for. Some may ask for wealth and prosperity. Some may ask their idols to transfer all the wealth from that community to their household. When you go to their place of business and patronize them, the idol behind the altar that was placed in that establishment now have access to you. Some workers of iniquity make their altars visible while some hide their altars. 
The workers of iniquity who hide their altars have a way of hiding their beliefs in plain sight. Most of the logos to the heathens' corporations are symbolic to their gods. For example, Starbucks have a marine spirit as their logo. Some heathens go as far as naming their company after their gods. Nike is a Greek goddess in the heathens' mythology. The heathens believe she is a goddess of victory, speed, and strength. Israelites, now do you comprehend the Nike commercials when you know the hidden agenda? Israelites, when it comes to the heathens, there's always a hidden agenda. Nothing is what it seems. When it comes to the heathens' corporations, their idols are being praised in their establishments. Remember when Satan said to the Messiah, All the kingdoms of this world I will give to you if you bow down and worship me. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan let us know he had control and power in all the kingdoms of this world. Israelites know that Satan does not have absolute power. Satan made it known that he will give the kingdoms of this world to whosoever he choose if they bow down and worship him. Clearly, the heathens took Satan's offer. Do you still believe their God is your God? Israelites, how do you believe the other species of mankind have all the wealth and you have very little of it? The other species of mankind use witchcraft and sorcery to obtain their heart desire. The Most High is not going to give them the desire of their hearts. They use the Satans to get power over you. Another way the heathens does witchcraft against you when they use your personal belongings. Social media is the best way the workers of iniquity are targeting and attacking people unawares. A lot of people overshare on social media. When you post your pictures and the pictures of your family members, the workers of iniquity can take those pictures, place them on their altars, and cast spells on you. The workers of iniquity are usually close friends with their victims, so they can place cursed items in the victim's house. Some may steal your personal belongings to place on their altars. At times, if they don't have access to you or your personal belongings, they will send you a gift. The gift is usually cursed. Potiphar's wife, who was obsessed with Joseph, Jacob's beloved son, she lays his food with enchantments to get Joseph to love her. And afterwards, she sent me food mingled with enchantments. And when the eunuch who brought it came, I looked up and beheld a terrible man giving me with the dish a sword. And I perceived that her scheme was to beguile me. And when he had gone out, I wept, nor did I taste that or any other of her food. Israelites, witchcraft attacks against you are very real. This is some of the ways the workers of iniquity practice witchcraft against you. The reason they need you to engage with their cursed objects, that is how the unclean spirits they sent against you will identify you. Once the workers of iniquity have access to you, their next step is to establish a covenant with you. Remember I said to you, without a covenant, the Satans can't do anything to you. Once the Satans get access, they will attack you in the spirit realm. Witchcraft attacks are done in the spirit realm. Witchcraft is an attack against your spirit. For example, let's say Wang is a worker of iniquity who opened a Chinese carryout in a predominantly black neighborhood. Wang wants wealth and prosperity. Remember, the idols of the heathens are silver and gold. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Israelites, the workers of iniquity need money. They control you in the beast system through money. Wang, the carryout owner, would place his altar inside the restaurant. All the people who patronize Wang's carryout give the idol behind Wang's altar access to tempt them in the spirit realm. The spirit of poverty will come to establish a covenant with everyone who enters Wang's carryout and make a purchase. The spirit of poverty can present itself in many ways in the spirit realm. The spirit of poverty will come as a thief stealing your purse or wallet in the spirit realm. You see an infestation of rats in your house in the spirit realm. You see yourself begging for money or you're wearing torn and raggedy clothes. The spirit of poverty may show up as a person saying, you won the lottery, then give you documents to sign. Those are some of the ways the spirit of poverty show up in the spirit realm to establish a covenant. 
the purpose of getting access to you to get the opportunity to tempt you in a spirit realm. Once the covenant is established, your spirit is now bound to their evil altar. The idol now have permission to carry out its will in your life. Because so many have no knowledge about the spirit realm, many become spiritually dead by workers of iniquity through a lack of knowledge. The reason the Most High will honor the covenant when you sinned, you gave the Satans and their agents access. When you agree to whatever they tempt you with in the spirit realm or the physical realm, you establish a covenant. The Most High will honor the covenant. Israelites, make no covenants with the heathens and with their gods. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Once the covenant is established, the Satans and the workers of iniquity will come to enforce the covenant you made with them in the physical realm. In the example of Wang's carryout, all the individuals who establish a covenant will find themselves addicted to Wang's food. They will go there multiple times a week to eat. That is one way the idol behind Wang's altar is transferring money out of that community to Wang. The people who established a covenant with Wang's idol will find themselves unable to save money. The spirit of poverty will oppress their finances until it strips them of all their money. Israelites, this is how a lot of our people are being oppressed in the beast culture and they have no idea. Some Israelites blame the curses. However, your poor decisions and lack of knowledge is to blame. Stop rejecting knowledge. White supremacy is the system used by the Satans and the workers of iniquity to enforce the evil covenants you establish in the spirit realm. The way the workers of iniquity are enforcing covenants you made with the spirit of poverty, high interest rates on a loan to stress your finances, the workers of iniquity refuse to give the indigenous black people loans to establish a business that can generate generational wealth for the black community. Israelites, can you discern how your decisions play a major part in the oppression against your life? Now can you comprehend why we don't wrestle with flesh and blood? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of indigenous black people believe if they have equal rights in the B system, that would end the oppression. What about the spiritual warfare against you behind the scenes? Most of you don't consider the Satans and the unclean spirits behind the scenes. In the awakening, everything is Esau's fault. There's a large population of Israelites that need to get rid of the victim mentality. Your poor decisions are causing you to suffer in the B system. When the Most High raised the anointed to help his people understand the world they live in, if the messages they present don't correspond with the heathen's doctrines, most Israelites will reject the knowledge and stone their own people. Have any of your religious leaders taught you about what you're hearing today? What about in the awakening? Most of your pastors teach you to accept Jesus and that's it. In the meantime, majority of you are living a defeated life and you have no knowledge unto why. There's more to your spiritual journey than accepting an idol to be your Lord and Savior. Today you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Once you open the door and let the Satans and unclean spirits enter, these devils will attack every area of your life. The spirit of poverty can bring the spirit of setback, backwardness and rejection to establish a covenant. Israelites, that is how a person can have legions of devils operating in them. Now that you know how the Satans and the workers of iniquity practice witchcraft and idolatry in religion and in the beast culture, it's important for you to know the various ways you're attacked via witchcraft. The workers of iniquity are the people who built the altar, conduct the rituals, and offer the sacrifices to the idol god. The worker of iniquity is the intercessor for the idol behind the altar. The most popular names for these workers of iniquity are high priest, witch, or warlock. Every culture have a name for the practitioner of the altar. Israelites, there are people who participate in witchcraft, but they are not a practitioner of an altar. There are people who seek the workers of iniquity. These individuals are your everyday people who use witchcraft to advance in life or to attack a person. The scriptures warn against this. Any Israelite 
who seek a person with a familiar spirit would be cut off from his people. The scripture said, these workers of iniquity will defile you. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Israelites, there are a lot of people who seek the workers of iniquity to advance in life and to destroy another person. The beast system is plagued with people who say they serve the most high. However, behind the scenes, they serve idols and seek them with a familiar spirit to advance in life. Majority of CEOs of major corporations are guilty of this sin. Your favorite celebrity and a lot of people you know are guilty of seeking them with a familiar spirit. When you stood before the evil altars in religion, you're guilty of seeking one with a familiar spirit. I bet a lot of the self-righteous among us are reevaluating their righteousness right about now. So many believe they are in good standing with the Most High. However, they are far from the Most High. Our ancestors are guilty of forsaking the Most High to seek them with a familiar spirit. King Saul, our nation's first king, is guilty of this sin. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her inquire of her and his servant said to him behold there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at endor the most high judged king saul harshly for his disobedience the most high took the kingdom away from saul and the tribe of benjamin and gave the kingdom to david the most high doesn't play when it comes to his people seeking the workers of iniquity the judgment reserved for our people who do this are severe a lot of Israelites are guilty of this sin. This is why they seek the workers of iniquity in secret. If seeking the workers of iniquity was of the most high, why do it in secret? A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people serve the most high with their lips and their hearts is far from the most high. The scripture said Saul disguised himself when he went to meet the worker of iniquity at Endor. Israelites, what is done in secret will come to light. Everything hidden will be known. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. The Most High is not only revealing the secrets of the heathens, he's revealing the heart of his people as well. To the people who pursue the workers of iniquity, you can deceive mankind, but you cannot deceive the Most High. He sees all and know all. The people who seek the idols of the heathens don't realize that the workers of iniquity are sacrificing them to their altars and caging their spirit in the process. The word of the Most High said, you reap what you sow. They believe the workers of iniquity are honorable. There is no good in the workers of iniquity and their idols. If the people who seek the workers of iniquity don't fulfill their end of the deal, the idols they serve will turn on them. A good example of idols turning against the people who serve them, untimely death. The idols behind the altars expect the person to bring them souls. If they don't, they end up paying with their life. The Most High will allow the judgment because the penalty for seeking those with a familiar spirit is death. You reap what you sow. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Israelites, whatever evil you send against a person via witchcraft, it will return right back to you. Israelites, know that the goal for the kingdom of darkness is always covenant. Without a covenant, they can't do anything to you. The hedge of protection the Most High has around you, no one can penetrate unless you give them permission or the Most High give them permission. When the workers of iniquity come to tempt you by deceiving you in the spirit realm, know that they are looking to establish a covenant. I've had many people say to me, I don't dream, or they can't remember their dreams. Forgetting your dreams is a witchcraft attack. The workers of iniquity sent a spirit to cause you to forget your dreams so that you won't break the evil covenants you established with them in the spirit realm. 
If you don't break the covenants, the Satans have permission to enforce the covenants. Forgetting your dreams is a spiritual attack. Make it a habit to break the covenants, regardless if you remember your dreams or not. It is a spirit that is causing you to forget your dream. Everything is a spirit. You must come against the spirit to get it to flee. The scripture said, submit to the most high, resist the devil, and they will flee from you. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Israelites, if you do nothing when the enemy attack, the devils are not going to flee. You must engage in spiritual warfare battle to destroy the devils causing you to forget your dreams or attacking you in general. You must come against the evil altars projecting those spirits at you. Complaining and not increasing your knowledge is not going to get a devil to flee nor stop a worker of iniquity from attacking you. You have to do your part. You dream every time you sleep. If you can't remember your dreams, ask the Most High to restore your dream life. The Most High is faithful. He will restore your dreams if your ways please him. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. You must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Don't depend on other people to fight your battles for you. Most deliverance pastors are workers of iniquity. I know Christianity disabled a lot of our people. The religious pastors made the people become dependent on them to work out their salvation. In the real awakening, you must work out your own salvation. You must put on the armor of the Most High to take your life back from the kingdom of darkness. You have to make the decision to stand against your enemies that is attacking you via witchcraft. We all have work to do. You must know what you're doing before engaging in spiritual warfare. Remember I said there's levels to sorcery. The high level workers of iniquity can astral project into your dreams. Some of these workers of iniquity can do things you can't even imagine. Look at the division in our communities. If you believe the self-hatred and the bickering between the black man and the black woman is a phase or we just can't get along right now, you're deceived. The hatred you have for yourself and for your people was done via witchcraft. A lot of Israelites and indigenous black people play right into their enemies' plans to destroy them. Remember, the Satans hate you. The Satans wants to destroy all of Adam and Eve's descendants. The Satans are using the seed of the fallen and indigenous black people who sold themselves to the beast system to accomplish their goal. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, Whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him and shall be left to me alone so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then be in want of me and he will restore me to it with my hosts. Again, he said, and as much as we do not know the day agreed upon with thee by thy God, nor the hour in which thou shalt be delivered, for that reason will we multiply war and murder upon thee and thy seed after thee. Israelites, we must have balance in the awakening. In order to be free, you must allow the Most High to purge the demonic doctrines of the heathens. If your spirit is tied to an evil altar, you're not free. If Israelites took the time to allow the Most High to disciple them, the spirit of division wouldn't have a stronghold in the awakening. When the truth is spoken, many will comprehend the word of the Most High because spirit recognized spirit. If the Most High was ordering the steps of his people in the awakening, we all would be on one accord. Unfortunately, some Israelites are turning the awakening into another denomination in Christianity. Israelites, let the truth of the Most High's words sanctify you. The awakening is more than knowing you're an Israelite and the Messiah is black. A lot was done to us while we were sleeping, and we have to give the Most High the opportunity to cleanse us from spiritual bondage. The only way to be transformed is by allowing the Most High to renew our mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Israelites, witchcraft and idolatry is very real. 
the beast culture is plagued with sorcery. Modern day witchcraft and idolatry hides behind religion. The Satans did a good job of desensitizing the people to witchcraft and idolatry. Remember, the beast system is Satan's kingdom in the physical realm. Israelites, know what is happening behind the scenes before you attack the people who rule over you. While some Israelites are focused on educating and saving the heathens, make sure your spirit, the real you, is not malnourished and being saved. Make sure the Most High is in control of your life. Anyone whose spirit is tied to evil altars are not in control of their life. Take the time to repent and establish a personal relationship with the Father to become free. Spiritual warfare is not a game. All who participate in witchcraft and idolatry are on the broad road that leads to destruction. Many Israelites are idolaters. The awakening is about repentance and returning to the Father. Anyone who have the Father is protected from the spiritual wickedness in high places. Israelites, as the Most High revealed the hidden secrets, Feed your spirit so that you can elevate from glory to glory. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness.